Hello, my name is Momo from the Momo Zone and welcome to the Accelerator videos. Today's video is with a guy called Bill Clements. I got to meet Bill at the NAMM show and I was really surprised when I came across him because I'm hearing like this killer bass sound coming around and I turn around and I see this guy with one arm playing away like he's got two. I got to really talk to Bill about what it's like to be in that position and to move forward anyways. Nothing stops Bill. Regardless of your disability, this man proceeds and shows you that anything is possible. Bill, you totally rock, and I can't wait to get together with you and do some stuff. Peace out. Ladies and gentlemen, over to the Mobile Zone. I'm here at the NAM show in LA, and wow, I have bumped into the bass player extraordinaire Bill Clements. That's his belt. Where are you from? Kalamazoo, Michigan. Battle Creek originally, but I've lived in Kalamazoo for the last 20 or so years. All right, and as you can see, nothing can stop this gentleman from doing what he's got to do. He's going to give us a little example Maybe of what... a hangover. A hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little. Give us, give, us, give us a little bit of what it is you're doing. Actually, people, you gotta notice this is really interesting. Uh, what's the name of this company? Marco Bass Guitars. Marco Bass Guitars. As you can see, it appears to have frets, but it's not really frets because they're kind of indented. It's a reverse fret job, which kind of gives you the attack and the feel of having a fret, but the slide yeah. of a fretless, right? So this really does make a huge difference, right? One of the key things about it that's so important is that where you're going to be playing a traditional fretless, you, you, you would get all this kind of stuff. With the drop, the sliding, the sando. But there's no metal to metal contact like there is with this. And that does two things. It gives it, it lends mid range. But it also lends this decaying growl on the end of the note. The growl is really there. frustrated with the sound I was getting. I mean, so there's some videos online of me playing a fretless, but it was it was a sound, and it was a decent sound, but it wasn't the one I had in my head until I started playing Marco's bass. Nothing I play is designed to be played with one hand. What's in the future for you right here? What's, what's in your plans musically? Well, I'm gonna get it, oh, musically. I just hooked up with uh, another really good bass player named Vic Danger out of Nashville, and uh, we're gonna do a double bass and drums trio called Big Machine that, uh, you know, it's pretty smoke and we're gonna go down and do a little jamming here in a minute. My friend, you are a primo example of humanity at its best, my friend. Nothing is stopping you and I'm getting goosebumps from it. See what it says on the hook there hanging? No, I can't, uh, it says, rat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that so, is so, so, so you get to wear this. This is amazing. No, I have to wear that. I mean, I don't. It gets in the way when I play. You know, I, I wear it sometimes because people think it looks cool. Oh, cyborg Bill, it's Road Warrior, whatever the hell. But more than anything else, it just gets in the way. It's excruciatingly painful to wear for long periods of time. And that I don't like to complicate. I mean, you know, that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about a condition like this is that it's not a one-time thing. It's a continuing thing level of pain that I experience and it's not universal to all amputees but I'm sure I'm not alone in this but it feels remarkably similar to the exact way it felt when it happened. Constantly? Yes. So you constantly have pain? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I'm awake, yes. You think it's a memory thing? I, would, I, I think it's a neurological thing. It's like the last impulse is those nerves received are in a continuous loop. But that having been said, you know, the fact that anybody in this situation who's dealing with it long term is going to have to wrestle with that. And that's tricky because it's a thing that few people can relate to. The people who are closest to you, in fact, become inured to it after a long period of time. They just take it for granted. Oh, oh that still hurts? Yeah, I just don't mention it to you because, uh, you know, if I mention it every time it hurt, that all be all I talked about. So, you know, who wants to be around that, you know? Say something to people out there 
that think they got it hard, you know what I mean? And some advice when they're in that position about getting the energy to go up and do something regardless of their disability, you know? Do you know what, do you know what the Latin der derivation of the word enthusiasm is? No. It's uh, basically full of God, you know? The idea that anything that excites you stimulates the creative urge that is the universal creator that is the one being that is love in the mind of God that we're all expressions of not Western religious kind of concepts I'm talking about the universal consciousness that we're all a subjective version of you didn't know what you're getting in for when you asked me that question I love it the bottom line is you have to find that thing that really validates you as a person not based on what anybody else's opinion of it is although I'm as I'm as I'm as fallible to falling prey to that as anybody else, but the bottom line is, it's gotta be the thing that you wake up in the morning excited about doing, you know? And that, with that in mind, if you've dealt with something on the level of a traumatic injury or, or a traumatic event even, I, I, I will go so far as to say it doesn't even have to be a physical experience. It can just be an experience that wrecks you. I mean, there are some terrible things that can happen that don't involve physical injury, you know? It doesn't matter bad relationship, you know, a bad day, whatever the hell. If you have that one thing that is that rock in the ocean that you latch on to, and, and more, than, more than just enjoying it, has to, it has to help define you and give you a purpose. I mean, I'm not talking about playing Nintendo all day, you know, because it's fun, you know. Fun to me is trivial. I'm here to get down to work. Yes, sir, that is beautifully said. That's right, because Fun and work can be combined. Yeah, you but can have fun when you're working, but they need not be mutually exclusive. But pure, you know, I, I have no time for anything that's, you know, insubstantial. You know, I, I don't have hobbies. I have one interest. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fairly narrow person in terms of what my routine is. I don't vary it. I'm obsessive compulsive about it. What I do is play this, this, this instrument. That's what I do. I also drink a lot, and I don't recommend it for you kids. But I'm not going to kid you. <laughs> I am who I am. I'm not a G-rated guy, and I never have been. If anyone can take something positive for me, that notwithstanding, absolutely. That that's to me that's garnishing on the cake for me. That in the in the course of being a self-absorbed narcissistic artistic bastard in the traditional sense, by by honoring that in some way, I still produce something that other people dig. And, and helps get them through whatever crap they've had thrown at them. But hell, everybody's happy. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Clements, incredible bass player, and let it be said that nothing has to stop you. When you got an idea in your head, when you got a dream, you gotta go for it. The only thing that stops you is you, and that's a fact. So, I, I gotta tell you, man, God bless you. Hey, buddy. Uh, this here's a Momo zone, and I've just been accelerating.